Hello, you're watching the Arab American Beat on Denzena TV. I'm Joseph Najjar. Thanks for tuning in. We're coming to you from the Queen Alia Airport in Amman, Jordan, en route to Aqaba, where we're going to check out the Red Sea Institute for Cinematic Arts. Get your popcorn ready. The flight from Amman was just under an hour and afforded us breathtaking views of the Jordanian desert. Strategic in location, Aqaba sits at the junction of trading routes between Asia, Africa, and Europe. Initiated by His Majesty King Abdullah's vision and the recommendation of Steven Spielberg, the Red Sea Institute of Cinematic Arts was formed in 2004 as a collaboration between Jordan's Royal Film Commission and the world-renowned University of Southern California School of Cinematic Arts. Upon arriving at the school, we were greeted by longtime director of the American Film Institute, who serves as the Chief Academic Officer and Dean, Dr. James Heinemann. The thing that attracted me the most and attracted uh, the University of Southern California Cinema School as a partner, and they've been very helpful in, in this whole project, was the quality of artistic expression that we found when we first started doing classes and workshops here. The faculty came back and said, the stories are fresh, the point of view is fresh, it's not just the same old stuff recycled, uh, it's a whole sense of the world that you won't find anywhere. And their commitment, their passion, they're not cynical, they're not, uh, they're not just in it for the money or the prestige, they really want their stories told and they want to tell stories. And luckily for these students, they're learning the craft of storytelling from the best of the best. They're receiving a beautiful education. Why they're coming here, hopefully, is because they have stories to tell. I, my greatest belief is story. And thankfully, most of the faculty here, we all think the same way. Story, story, story. There's been a great cinema tradition in the Middle East, as there is very strongly today in Egypt. Uh, really strong films coming out of Lebanon from time to time, from Syria. There, but Jordan hadn't been a media country at all. Uh, but the commitment of the palace and the government to media, to free expression, to good, strong, creative media was so clear to me. Uh, and not only that, they were being very sensible about it. An important element of that sensibility includes the commitment to building a cinematic library rich in resources and references for regional filmmakers to tap into. There's a surprising uh, lack of information when it comes to cinema culture for a variety of reasons. So uh, Rasika's library, we hope to be a, sort of a center for independent scholars to come uh, search for good information and also for uh, a place where anybody can come if they're interested in movies. Who is Godard? Who is Orson Welles? They can come here and use our, our resources so that film culture, which is in need of growth, can grow on its own. If someone's curious, they know that they can come to Rasika and get the best information. And while creativity is key to the craft of filmmaking, Rasika is ensuring their students equally understand the art of this business. But most people come in here with uh, having made their own films already. Uh, thinking of themselves as maybe writers, maybe directors, but seldom thinking of themselves as producers, which is what they are to make their own films. So what I, my job really is to take that basic enthusiasm and the basic knowledge and turn it into uh, turn it into film producing, which is like the business side of making a film. And really, the, the business side is very, very important because the business decisions they make in terms of getting their money, getting the rights for their films, all the, all the content of their films, all the music, all this other stuff is very, very important because without it they can't actually show their films across the world, which is the whole point of the exercise, really. But way before these filmmakers get to travel the world showcasing their finished features, they have to learn the tedious task of screenwriting. Like all film students, they have to start with uh, writing visually, uh, trying to tell their story in a way that is captured by what we call moving pictures for a reason, right? Uh, you want to see a story that is active and that has characters who are engaging. And that takes practice, and so we start with very short films and we work them up to long films. And we teach it the same here as we teach it in California and New York. Accomplished Hollywood screenwriter Wayne Powers, who also teaches screenwriting at Rasika, concurred with Professor Doyle's opinion. I try to uh, 
have them tell the stories that are personal and have meaning to them. Um, Toy Story said that if you want to speak of the world, speak of your own village, and I think we try to emphasize that. At the same time, I try to tell them that it's okay to hide your themes and to hide your personal stories within a genre movie. So sometimes they'll be doing something like that. I wondered if there were any differences between the writing styles of students in the Middle East versus America. The tradition of Arab poetry, which uh, creeps into the work, uh, the, the uh, very much of a, uh, a love of abstraction, a love of, of doing an image uh, that is, is potent and, and, and exciting, but not necessarily linear or logical. Uh, that's in all of their work. Plus, um, a strong sense of fate, which I think uh, Americans, with their sort of can-do culture, and uh, we can, you know, just change everything by ourselves, I don't think that that's a shared idea here, and I think that they believe in uh, fate. <laughs> In this sort of industry, you have to be te technologically savvy. What we're seeing is that you guys have spared no expenses when it comes to supplying your students with top-of-the-notch equipment. That, that is part of the deal. I mean, if you want to work uh, beyond just doing your own films, and our, our students have made a wide variety of, of films on their own before they ever get to Rasika, and some of them are, are fabulous, but they're working with whatever they can get their hands on. So what we're trying to do is give them what the industry standard, like we're here in the, in the editing lab, this is standard equipment really internationally. So that somebody comes along with a foreign production or they decide they want to do a co-production or whatever the circumstances, they'll be able to use the equipment. They'll have the skills as well, the editorial skills, um, to do what is required of them for something that's going to go just beyond uh, their family and friends or the, a, a small audience. And really the same thing is true uh, across the board. The, the camera equipment we have is state of the art. Um, we're, we're really trying to give them the latest so that they can move into whatever sphere might be open to them. And one of those spheres which Rasika prides itself on preparing students for is sound. Sound is a, a, a very important element in telling a story in a film. Because since film is mainly about telling a story, so you have all the departments working together to tell the story, but sound is a very crucial element. Because picture gives you information while sound gives you the emotion. We have the first specialized sound design uh, facility. Now here we have like, some of the equipment uh, behind me and uh, what Rasika is mainly about it, it's about concepts of the industry. Uh, understanding the concepts will help you use any kind of equipment to achieve your goal but if you don't have the concepts, if you have the technical mater uh, materials or the technical knowledge it will ha help you go nowhere. Like, you know how to drive but you don't know the uh, driving regulations or rules. So, Rasika is mainly trying to have a balance between technical uh, knowledge and concepts. And concepts, they are all derived from the art of telling a story. With all this talk about storytelling, I wanted someone to tell me the story about Rasika's state-of-the-art facility that's being constructed. And luckily for me, Hassan Nasser had all the information I was looking for. We obtained the piece of land through the Royal Film Commission and uh, this will be, and we've already finished all our designs and everything. On this ground here, all this vast area is going to be our beautiful facility um, uh, and we will accompany that later on with a cinema, a three-screen uh, cinema and uh, a hotel so that one day we will have our, our own film festivals and we are going to host our students and for our students to, you know, to be launched from here, from Ankara. We're going to do it in, in different phases. So the phase one would be the actual campus of the university, and it should take from a year and a half to two years.